Welcome to the Evergreen RX, your prescription for living well. Here, we're all about self-exploration, intentionality, and working with our mind, body, and soul for healing and growth. I'm your host, Hayden. I'm in my 20s and in search of connection, fulfillment, and ways to make sense of the world. If you're down, join me as I explore tools to bridge the gap between external reality and our deep inner worlds, discovering our own prescriptions for health, wholeness, and expansion. Hello, welcome back to the Evergreen RX. Thank you so much for clicking on today's episode. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing good, if anybody's wondering, but just kind of want to check in. We've been making these episodes for a while now, so we, meaning me, um, and I feel like, you know, starting to build up the community, so how are you doing? Let me know. Uh, I'm good, and I'm also having a lot of existential um, thoughts and and questions recently, so that's been fun, but today we're not going to dive in too deeply to all of that. Um, We are actually going to talk about a really fun new topic or term, I guess, that I recently found out was a thing on TikTok. So as some of you may know, I do have a TikTok for the Evergreen RX, but I'm not really active on TikTok. Um, I have like the best, sweetest girl that um, posts on there for me because I just like truly cannot get involved too deeply um, with TikTok at this point in my life. But I do, you know, peripherally know about some of the trends going on on that platform. And recently I saw that bed rot or like rot days is a thing and it just totally clicked in with me because I was already wanting to talk a little bit about um, the idea of like recharging and being able to recharge well Um, and this concept of rot days just fits perfectly in so if you haven't heard of it if maybe you're you know abstaining from TikTok like I am uh, or you're just in other niche categories rot days from what I understand is basically just like when you spend the whole day in bed you do mindless activities or minimal activity, you know, watching TV, eating food, just like totally absent from the world in your own little bubble for a day or sometimes days at a time. And let me tell you, I was like, wow, I didn't didn't know there was a name for it, but I love a good rot day. I love a good day to just chill and disconnect. And actually, before learning about this concept, I had been thinking more deeply about the way that I recharge and the way that I chill. I know that I talked in an episode in the past about how Saturdays have become kind of tricky for me because it's like, okay, it's the break from the work week. I want to make the most of it, uh, but I don't know what to do and I don't know how best to spend my time. And I think part of that is I want to recharge, but I don't exactly know how to do that effectively or in a way that feels good to me so that was already kind of on my mind and then I discovered this you know trend um, and it just made me want to talk to you guys about it Uh, you know kind of explore the concept together and maybe talk a little bit about some of the things that I've learned on how to kind of rot well or recharge well Um, and maybe we can help each other out in terms of you know I think at the root of this trend and and of just taking time to totally disconnect is the fact that all of us are you know feeling overrun or overstimulated or overworked and we just get to a point where we have to just shut everything off because it just becomes too much and I think that's a really valid and pervasive problem a lot of us are dealing with so I just I feel like it's worth exploring further so yeah kind of just to lay the groundwork a little bit i want to talk some more about kind of what rot days are what they look like and maybe some of the deeper uh driving forces or negative impacts that are leading all of us to need these just days in bed and then i want to talk a little bit about how to uh you know go throughout your week in a way that promotes kind of micro rotting micro recharging uh, and some ideas for how to make the most of a rot day or a recharge day when you have one. So when I first started thinking about my own rot days, 
I was really looking at it from the context of like, okay, I feel drawn to do these semi-frequently. You know, my boyfriend and I will like to sometimes move our bed into the living room because we don't have a TV in our room um, and just hang out, get really comfy, eat our favorite foods, catch up on shows, which is awesome. And it's, it's so fun and I love it. And it's like, you know, almost like being a kid and just getting to totally chill and enjoy yourself. But I also started noticing some, noticing some of the darker sides of it. You know, like my legs started to feel sore or just my body in general. I didn't feel super comfortable. The house would get a little messy and I would start to feel kind of frazzled by that or maybe some of the chores that I needed to do were falling behind. Um, and just a general sense of numbing out a little bit. You know, it like got to a point where I was like, oh, what what to watch? Like, there's nothing I really want to watch. I'm just trying to find something to fill my time and to keep me distracted. And it just gets to a point where it starts feeling a little less fun, maybe as the day wears on or maybe if it extends into day two. Um, and I didn't love that because I want to be able to have a way to recharge and to just completely enjoy myself. But also have that actually feel recharging and help me when I move into the week instead of throwing me off kilter and then trying to get back on track all week and then being thrown off again. So like I said, I think a really important thing to explore talking about this topic is what leads us to want to rot in the first place. You know, like that sounds kind of unattractive, like I want to rot in bed and like you know, it even has a little bit of a negative connotation on that it's so far into shutdown mode and just shut off the world mode that it's like you're rotting. So yeah, I I spent a little time thinking on what it is that would draw us all towards this behavior or this activity so much so that it becomes a trend and there's a term for it. I mean, there's enough of us out there doing this and feeling drawn to this type of behavior. Like, what is that? And the first thing that comes to mind for me is obvious, which is just overstimulation. I think anyone living at this time, but especially the younger generations, like, you know, me and and maybe you listening, are just completely overstimulated. Like, we've had phones since childhood there's social media, there's just constant communication, there's ads on everything, there's things to buy and places to go and restaurants to try that were constantly being marketed, there's signs everywhere when you just drive down the street, like it is just a constant flow of advertisement being marketed towards our attention being, you know, sold to these things that are, you know, that we're told are good for us or something that we should want to be a part of. And that just leads to this constant state of hyper arousal and stimulation. Just like, you don't have to have a dull moment if you don't want to have a dull moment. I mean, I could literally be sitting in a deprivation chamber and if I had my phone, I wouldn't have to be bored. I wouldn't have to be alone. I wouldn't have to sit with my thoughts just that one thing, that one device, if we took everything else away, would be stimulating enough to keep my attention for a long time. Much less add in all of the sights and the sounds and the interactions that we have in our world already because we don't live in a deprivation tank. So it's like stimulation on top of stimulation. We also have constant social demands, which can be a good thing. You know, we need community. We want connection. We want friendships and family. Um, but because of the nature of phones and the internet is, you know, people can reach you at any time. And usually there's like a somewhat expected etiquette of how quickly you get back to them. So it's like last week I had a really busy day. I went to work straight from work. I went roller skating and straight from there I went to dinner and then all of a sudden it was 10 o'clock and I had gotten a few texts from people earlier in the day saying, hey, like, when do you want to do lunch? Or like, ask me a question. And I'd seen them, but like, literally, I couldn't even manage opening them because I didn't have time to respond. 
But it was in the back of my head that I needed to and that time was going on and I hadn't gone back to this person yet. And so it's like that kind of demand on our system can get really exhausting. I also know that we live in like a hustle culture or where, you know, it's prized to be performing, creating output, um, having your main job and your side hustle. And in whatever way productivity looks to you, being really productive in that way and showing that you are providing something, you are making something, you're putting something out into the world. And that also gets really exhausting. You know, it's not enough now to just show up to work and clock out and go home and read your book. Like, maybe some of you out there are better about, you know, prioritizing that and knowing that that is an okay thing to do. But I think the overtone or the over-cultural message is that that's not okay and you always should or could be doing something more, even if that's just fun activities. Like, oh, well, there's this festival going on there's this market there's this uh, new restaurant that opened up you know like always jam-packing and i mean i hate to throw it out and i'm not the most educated person on the topic but i know we've all been talking a lot about the effects of living in a capitalistic society like things are being sold to us constantly and there's a lot of information that gets embedded within us um just by the nature of the general conversation I also think we're coping with a lot of external pressure or worries or fears um, due to just how much tragedy or stressful circumstances that there can be. You know, there's natural disasters, which those have always happened, but now it's on even larger scales and we are aware of all of them happening around the world, which, you know, we should be and there's ways to help, but... It's also like pre-internet, if there was an earthquake across the globe, you wouldn't know about it. You wouldn't see just the destruction and heartache and loss. And that can take, you know, hits on our system. And, you know, also having lived through COVID, through a pandemic, the fear that one may happen again, seeing things in the news, politics, you know, just constant flow of information a lot of it pretty disconcerting um and just having to cope with those existential threats and worries while also moving through your own like individual small scale kind of life and day to day sometimes balancing those two can get really exhausting and i think it just wears even more on our system to the point where we just want to shut it all out you know, even after describing all of this stuff, I'm like, yeah, of course we want to shut it out. Of course we want to literally rot in bed in our own little safe bubble because moving in the world can be really exhausting and demanding. Ultimately, I think sometimes what we're trying to do, what we're trying to cope with through these rot days is to be able to shut down, shut off, and shut out. Like, no one reach me. I'm not going to look at anything. I'm not going to do anything. Like, I am just here for my pleasure and enjoyment or what I think will give me pleasure or what I think will at least distract me from thinking about everything else for a little bit Uh, and this is how I'm going to cope and obviously some of these factors are just out of our control we can't really do anything about them and it is just the nature of the world that we're living in right now however I think that we can make small changes to really help us be able to recharge well. Because although we cannot change or control all of the factors that make us just want to go into our little cocoon, we can impact the way that we recharge and take care of ourselves so that we can better deal with those factors. And by just rotting and mindlessly going into a little hole, we sometimes can be even more negatively impacting ourselves and making it even harder to move through the world when we come out of our little shell. You know, any of you listening might have experienced this when taking a day that might look like a rot day or time in bed, that it doesn't always result in feeling better. You know, it can impact our sleep. It can impact mental health. You know, any routines that you may have established, you can throw them off 
kilter and just overall do the opposite of what you're wanting to do, which is to recharge. So when I was thinking about all of this for myself, one of the first things I thought of, I was like kind of into, which is the idea of having like micro rots throughout the week. So some examples of what that could look like is, you know, shutting off your computer a little earlier in the evening than you normally would, or maybe taking an extra long lunch if you can during the work day or the school day, sleeping a little bit later in the morning than you normally would if that's accessible to you. You know, that might mean sacrificing some of your other morning activities, but if you really need that sleep, taking the sleep, not waiting for the end of the week, the weekend where you can catch up on it because one, we all know catching up on sleep doesn't actually work. Um, And also it might just deplete you even more throughout the week if you're running more and more on empty. Another thing I think would constitute a micro rot is saying no to plans or changing your mind on plans you may have already established. I've been pretty busy socially recently and sometimes I'll look at my week ahead and be like, damn, like every evening is kind of taken or any space in my schedule has been filled up. And some weeks that feels good, it feels exciting. And some I'll get to a point of being like, I don't want to do this anymore. I said I would go see this person. I said we would go, you know, to dinner or whatever it is. Um, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't feel like I have the energetic capacity. When we made this plan last Sunday, I thought, yeah, that sounds awesome. Thursday, it's going to be great. I'm going to love it. But now it's Wednesday evening and I'm already exhausted. And I think I need to take care of myself tomorrow instead of doing that plan. You know, and so being able to say no um, and even explaining or sharing with somebody, you know, I need to take a little bit of time to myself. I've, I've, I accidentally overextended myself this week or I don't have as much energy as normal. Let's do something next week or, you know, whatever it is. I think all of those little activities that maybe you only have 30 minutes or an hour gained from it or, you know, it's just an evening. If we place those throughout our week and don't allow so much to build up, it can be easier to decompress naturally through those micro events uh, instead of needing just a complete shut off and shut down. I think another micro rot activity can be just cutting down on your stimulus. Sometimes I'll catch myself and I'm doing work and I'm like on my computer and then I'm going and doing something on my phone and then it's like back to my computer and then I gotta go like change out the laundry or cutting out maybe some of those sources of stimulus Um, And just really getting to focus or hone in on one activity for 30 minutes if you can, uh, can surprisingly have a recharging effect, probably a little bit to do with, you know, the concept of flow state. Y'all are familiar with that idea that when you are doing an activity and it's like the right level of challenge and the right level of engagement, you get into this flow state where time like is suspended and you're just completely engrossed in what you're doing. And that's actually a really positive state for us to be in and can feel really good. So when we're juggling 18 balls, you're not going to get into flow state. And so seeing if there is a certain activity that you need to do, if you are able to kind of leap past that barrier of, you know, settling attention into the state of, you know, more focused attention or more flow. Because usually when we start something for like the first 10 to 15 minutes, maybe longer for some people, um, we can still be really distracted and kind of flighty. But if you just keep sticking with it and you don't go into any of those distractions, usually we'll start to settle and then become a lot more focused. So these mini rots, they might not be the full hog and they might not give all the same feelings as a full rot day, which we will talk about. Um, But I think it's like that idea of just continually like checking in and taking care of yourself and taking those micro. You might notice that you just feel a little bit more charged up throughout the week. You know, it's kind of like the idea of when you're at a music festival and your like phone's gonna die and you'll just take like any little bit of charge you can get it might not get you to a hundred percent 
but you're taking that little recharge and it helps. It gives you a little more time. It buys you a little more energy um, and reduces some of the stress levels. So maybe think about, you know, some of these micro rots. It's just that little quick, your friend has a portable charger and you're seeing them for 30 minutes type of thing. I also think something that helps is listening to your needs and your natural rhythms and cycles. So we all have natural rhythm and some weeks we're going to be like energizer bunny and some weeks we won't be. And, you know, those levels that it fluctuates might vary for you versus someone else. You know, you might have a friend that they'll be super high energy and sometimes they're lower energy and maybe you fluctuate more in the middle, but no matter what, you're fluctuating. And so taking that into account when you're structuring your time, I'm thinking, okay, like last week I was really feeling going on runs, but I just am not this week. Like I do not have the energy for that. Switching it up, trying something different, listening to that, not not saying to yourself, oh, why? What's wrong? Like, I could do this last week. I could do this last month. Why am I not doing it now? Well, you're not feeling it now. Whatever reason that is, there's like a million factors that play into our natural rhythm. So really trying to listen and tune in on what it is that you actually feel like you have capacity for at this moment. Maybe sometimes you need more sleep or it would be helpful to extend your self-care routine a little bit. Taking a bath, you know, um, maybe doing a face mask. Like these are really like cliche examples, but sometimes those are going to feel better than others or more necessary than others. You know, I know for myself, there are weeks where I'm feeling more anxious than other ones. And because of the nature of my job, anxiety, like... You know, my job kind of creates a little anxiety for me um, just because I'm still learning and I'm growing so much. Um, And so then when I'm having a little bit more of an anxious week, it's like, okay, I need to step back and do things that help me feel centered and take care of myself um, because like I'm working with this increased level of anxiety and there's still things I have to show up for. And I need to figure out a way that I can like show up for them you know, in the best way possible for me right now. I think at the end of the day, the fact is that we're not robots and you might just be pushing yourself a little bit too hard. If you notice increasingly more needs or more time that you're devoting to just completely rotting and laying in bed and shutting off the world, that might be your body's signal to you that something is not working. You know, when you are on, when you are showing up, you might be going so hard that it's depleting you to such a degree that you have to swing the pendulum the complete opposite direction. Okay, so now for some rot day tips because even though, you know, I'm throwing out some ideas for how to keep the pendulum a little bit more stable and to take care of yourself consistently, you know, I'm not going to throw out the idea of a rot day. Like, I definitely am not planning anytime soon to quit you know, my lazy Saturday or lazy Sunday, especially at this age when it's like, I can take that time. I don't have a lot of things to be responsible for, so I can allow myself uh, to just chill, which is awesome, and it's a gift, Um, but it feels especially good when we're able to do it well, Um, when I actually feel recharged after and feel better moving into my week. That is so much more satisfying than the days that I've just you know, completely turned into a lump on the couch and short term feels kind of nice, but long term, it really didn't have the effect that I was wanting. So here's my little tips. I wish I had like a magical banner edited above me that's like rot day tips, but um, some things I thought of, some things that I have tried recently that I've noticed have helped me, which I also do just want to set set out as a disclaimer here that this is such a new kind of area of exploration for me and like I had one day that I did all of these tips and it was awesome and I loved it and I felt so recharged and then this past weekend I had essentially a rot day that I felt like I didn't apply any of these things to and it was very hard for me to motivate myself and even though I could think of something that would maybe make me feel better I couldn't even get the motivation up to do it and so that happens and 
you know, at the time I was feeling kind of down and mean on myself for it, but I'm realizing that that also did not help at all. Um, and it's just a work in progress. Like it really is. And I'm dealing with it too. So I'm throwing these out here. And if next time you apply some of them and it feels good. And then the time after that you don't, and it's just this back and forth. That's all right. That's like how growing looks. That's one of the reasons I wanted to call this evergreen because it's just a constant growth and process. And if I had all the answers or like the solutions for how we can make it easier, I would give them, but I don't. And I also struggle with this stuff. So yeah, I just want to throw that out there as well. So my first idea is to set intentions for what you're kind of wanting and uh, also let anybody know that you're kind of going to be MIA if you feel like that's necessary. If you feel like there's going to be certain people that are wondering where you're at or trying to get in contact with you, letting people know in advance can really help with that process of fully disconnecting. Um, and when I say like intentions, you know, recently I, I just was thinking in the morning before a planned kind of lazy rot day um, and... I just jotted down like a few quick intentions that probably didn't make much sense, but it was like, I think one was like, relax and read. And then the other one was like strawberry water. I just really wanted to make strawberry water, which is just strawberries cut up in water. Um, I didn't actually even end up doing that, but it was like really more of the intention of like what that symbolizes for me on like that's a little special and like ooh a little beverage and like to care myself take the time to like you know maybe make oatmeal for breakfast you know that would have the same energy of like instead of my normal routine or easy path I'm gonna like maybe do something that feels a little more luxurious um, I'm sure I had other intentions on them, but I don't remember and they probably made no sense. But really, that's kind of even just getting up like the energy of the day. Like, what do I want this energy to look like and feel like? Um, and I actually do think it made a difference for me. Another tip would be to include some gentle movement. And now I hesitate to put this one out here because I really don't like the idea of like, well, I should work out or should exercise today. Like, I'm being so lazy. I don't love that, but I do know that when I have included some movement in my day of recharging and relaxing, um, it does help. And this might just be more of a personal thing, but trying it out, you know, that can even look like chair or like bed yoga. There's some videos on YouTube you can find of just some simple stretches or maybe you go for a little walk, get connected with nature. Uh, that can be super recharging uh, and just getting the blood flow moving maybe if you've spent some time in bed through the morning and the early afternoon and you take a little break to move a little and then you go back and you lay down some more um, it can help break it up and get some more blood flow to your brain and your extremities um, especially if things kind of start taking like a turn and becoming a little more depressing uh, getting up and getting moving can help a lot with that I also think setting aside some dedicated time for journaling or listening to music or getting a little bit quiet and spending some time with your thoughts and just checking in. So like I said, one of the blissful pleasures of a rot day is watching some TV, enjoying some of your content. I'm not taking that away from myself anytime soon either, but maybe planning ahead, setting aside a time, maybe a time of the day that you're like, all right, I'm going to pause things for a little bit to get quiet, to do whatever practice it is that helps me connect with myself. Um, just so you, you drop in with that, you know, there might be things that have piled up over the week that you didn't even realize were contributing to your feeling of burnout or exhaustion, or were contributing to your need to recharge. So, Taking a little bit of time to spend with yourself with no distractions, ideally, can be a really helpful little practice and also be something that can have a big impact as you move into your next week. In terms of selecting content to absorb or 
enjoy. I would say really try to select content that you love and potentially to limit some scrolling. So um, if you want to take some time to catch up on Instagram, see what people are up to, all right. But maybe if you find yourself going into like a mindless hole and just continuing to scroll, maybe setting a timer on your phone before you get started. Um, Or if there's a certain app that tends to make you feel worse after you're on it, maybe you just don't choose that app on your rot day. Yeah, just being mindful and conscious about the content that you can consume uh, and maybe putting a few loving boundaries around yourself uh, for how much of it you do consume. That's another one of my tips kind of too on like maybe setting a time limit ahead of time on how long you want to rot for. Is it going to be the whole day? Is it possible that you do a half day? Do you have plans later? And so you're going to recharge in the morning, kind of having some concept or idea as you move into it um, can be beneficial in terms of not getting stuck in the rot and in the goo. And then maybe incorporating some other activities like reading or playing games or doing a hobby that you really like to do. Maybe you bust out your watercolors or a game that you haven't played. Maybe you learned solitaire. Man, that game is fun. Just getting creative with some of the things that you like to do and and adding some diversity to the activities that you spend the day on. Lastly, I would suggest hydrating. Um, That's a simple one, but you know, you might be enjoying some more of your favorite foods um, and you're not moving around as much. So staying hydrated, keeping that digestion flowing uh, will just contribute to you not feeling so like after you know laying around for a while and I also suggest checking in I went to a workshop recently for the autumn equinox and one of the instructors likes to ask herself the question is this moving me closer to myself whenever she's you know choosing an activity Um, and I think that's a fantastic question you know is this moving me closer to myself Am I feeling better? Does this feel good? I think that is a great question. You know, as you're clicking next on, you know, the fifth episode of Gossip Girl that you've watched, maybe just saying, you know, does this feel good anymore? Or is there something that I would like to do instead? And just getting curious and seeing what you like to do. Because if it still feels good, if that sixth episode of Gossip Girl still feels good, then go for it. Um, But just, you know, being sure to check in as you recharge and you rot well. All right, so I would love to hear some of your rot day activities. Um, So hit me up on Instagram um, or send me an email. Uh, And if you have any other tips or advice, please share them with me so that I can share it with everybody else and we can all just kind of help each other out because like I'm saying I could use some help on it too Um, maybe some advice especially when you get stuck in that place of okay I know I could do that activity and it would probably make me feel better but I really don't want to do it or you know I'm just can't seem to get myself up or into it Um, that would be great and the dose In case you didn't hear last episode, I'm kind of changing the dose up just to see how it goes on giving more of a recap of what we've talked about so that if this does really resonate with you and you want to kind of touch back in later and not have to listen to everything again, you can kind of just go to the dose or go to my website and see where it's written out um, as just a little cue-in and and, uh, spark notes of what we talked about. So the dose is that raw days are helpful tools for recharging if we do them with intention. Practice many rots throughout your week to take care of yourself and continue to keep your battery from getting too low. And when it comes to the full deal, the whole rot day, um, checking in and setting some intentions and time limits for yourself, potentially planning activities, and diversifying what you do that makes you feel really recharged. And checking in with yourself to see what feels good and if what you're doing is moving you closer to yourself. 
So that's all I have for you today. I think this is kind of a fun topic and we continue can continue talking about uh, the idea of recharging well because I think that's such a big component of living well. So um, yeah, I would love to hear from you and until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye.